my name is Alex Worth. I'm uh, here with the Oregon Fly Fishing Vlog at the Caddis Fly Shop here to tie up some October caddis today. Uh, we're going to tie a pupa, one of my favorite patterns, and uh, see what you think. Alright, today we're going to tie an October caddis pupa. We're going to tie them on these new Daiichi 1920s in a size 8 with a 3.8 millimeter, 5 30 seconds tungsten slotted bead. The barbless hook, so I don't need to mash the barb or anything. I'm going to start by getting the uh, bead secured on the hook. Secure the hook in the vise. I'm using Edo Uni Thread and Wine Color here. I'm going to get some thread started behind the bead. Just trying to prop that bead up right up against the hook eye. Take my trusty scissors, cut the tag. I like, we're going to do a dubbing loop body here. So I'm going to spin my thread counterclockwise flatten it out and do a nice flat underbody here. It doesn't matter quite so much, but I just like to have that nice even underbody. We don't need to go super far down the, uh, the hook shank here with the, the body. Um, it's going to be kind of trailing backwards a little bit. The material from the dubbing loop is going to create most of the body, which you'll see uh, in the end product here. So I'm going to make a pretty sizable loop. Wrap around twice. Uncord it a little bit again. And build that body up a little bit again, moving all the way back. We're going to leave a little bit of space here behind the bead. Got some shaky hands this morning. Can thank me, uh, thank my uh, favorite cafe for that. So, next thing we're going to do here is we're going to take three different dubbings and we're going to make a little bit of a blend. Got some ice dub and UV shrimp pink. Got some STS trialable dub and golden stone. And then we've got Senyo's fusion flame or fusion dub and flame. I'm not going to take very much of these three. I've got like a little pinch here. And got a little pinch. Here, maybe a little bit more than that. Just get a teeny little bit more. And then a little bit of this UV shrimp pink eye stub as well. Now, if you're doing this a few flies at a time, you can just do one by one, make all the material uh, for that one dubbing loop all at the same time. Or if you're doing a bunch of them at once, which I like to do, I'll do like a dozen of them at a time, I will actually do a huge batch of dubbing and I'll just blend it all together. So when you're blending it all together, you just pull it apart, stack it on, on top of each other over and over again. So I'm going to get this all up into the dubbing loop. And we're going to spread it apart just a little bit, work it out. I'm going to try to make sure that this is fairly even in the, the loop as well. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to spin it up. And here's the important part. After you've spun this up, you want to take your bodkin and, and we're really going to pick this out. You want it to be super, super picked out, lots of fibers hanging off of the, the thread cord in the middle because you want this to be swept back as you wrap the dubbing loop up the body. Next time I'm going to take my trusty finger pick tool and I'm really again just brushing this out so you can see there's so much hanging off of that center cord. I want it like that. I want it to be as buggy as possible, as they say. That is a term that works for pretty much everything I've found. 
my thing. So now we're gonna, again, as you see, I'm pulling these, these fibers back. I'm sweeping them back as I wrap it. Thanks again to Tailored Coffee this morning for my really shaky hands. Feels good. Is it black? Yes. You bet it is. Nice, lightly roasted, single origin coffee this morning, really, in the spot. All right, we're uh, getting about the halfway point here. Again, you can see I'm continuing to suit these fibers back. This looks like it's a mess, and that is the idea. So one thing that's unique about a caddis, or sorry, an October caddis, is the pupal stage has different emergence than most ever, other types of caddis pupa. Most other types of caddis pupa will rise from the stream bed, use an air bubble trap between their nymphal, sh their nymphal shuck and their adult exoskeleton to rise to the surface and emerge as adults on the surface. But an October caddis pupa is going to do something different. They're actually going to go to the side of the river, the stream bed, and work their way up onto rocks on the bank. So that's why I'm fishing this with a pretty big bead, 3.8 millimeters. I'm, I'm bouncing this off the bottom and, and rocky riffles and runs that are going to be pretty close to the, the shore. So this. It's gonna look a lot cleaner in a second. I'm gonna pull all these fibers back. I just use that bodkin to pick anything that's been trapped inside out of the way. I'm gonna pull all these back. This looks like a lot. About twice the length of that hook shank. I'm just gonna take my scissors here and cut it square. Um, you might notice if you're spending a lot of time on YouTube or you're really knowledgeable with your fly tying patterns that this is really Pretty dang similar to Kelly Gallup's caddis pupa. I just do a little bit of variation from it because this is bigger, different colors obviously. And then I like to add a couple extra materials because why not overcomplicate it? What I did there at the uh, that last step that I didn't mention is I took the points of my scissors and I cut just at the end here to make this not quite so harsh of an edge, just give it a little bit of a nice natural taper. And that doesn't look you know, super realistic on the vise, but it, it, trust me, it looks a lot better in the water. All right, next step here is I'm gonna take some of this UV pearl ice tub, and I'm really very, very lightly gonna take maybe five or six strands, and that's it. And I'm gonna wrap these around the hook shank. I'm gonna take this in a pinch wrap here, I'm cording this thread up, spinning it clockwise, Just wrapping it around the, the shank of the hook. I normally, I'll take maybe 10 or 20 fibers because if you've ever worked with this stuff before, you know that this UV pearl eye stub is not easy to work with. It gets everywhere and you maybe end up putting a quarter of what you grab out of the bag actually into the fly. But the advantage of this, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it really gives it kind of a nice sheen to the outside of the, uh, the body that we've just developed there. I'm just gonna trim those ends off nice and flat. All right, next step, I'm gonna take a CDC feather. This is kind of like a dark, almost greenish gray. Um, I like anything that's dark gray or brown, black is gonna work great. And these giant bags, if you tie a lot, these are an absolute game changer. These will last you so long. And these super long feathers in here, these select feathers, you can probably get like two or even three flies out of one feather. Cording that thread up to make for a nice secure tie-in. Wrapping that back just a little bit. I'm gonna take my points of my scissors here. And trim out the tip. <clears throat> Doesn't have to be super neat there. I'm maybe gonna get one or two, oops, maybe one or two wraps of CDC in here. Don't wanna bulk this up too much. I 
What like, color CDC is that? That's is. just kind of like a dark gray. It's kind of like a dove gray color. Nice. And secure that on. And a couple more wraps there. All right, cool. Next step here, another situation where if you're tying a lot, this is gonna make a big difference, but whole partridge skin is, it's really a game changer. Being able to pick your feather by size based off of where it is in the skin makes it really easy if you're tying a bunch of small little soft hackles, and like 14s and 16s, you know exactly where to find them on the partridge skin. And every feather is gonna be a good feather. Sometimes when you buy those bags, you gotta hunt and pick through to find a decent one. And it can take you a while, it can be kind of frustrating. This really makes a big difference, especially if you're tying a lot. All right, cord up the thread again. Get the tip of the feather. Dog saying hi. Hi, dog. All right. <clears throat> and cut the end out there. Again, pretty sparse here. Maybe get one turn out of this. That's a little bit much. I'm just going to pull a few of these off. Perfect. If you don't have partridge and you wanted to substitute something, you could do like a brown India hen. The legs on these October caddis are pretty dark. The body looks maybe like amber to tan and a little bit of orange or yellow in there. Um, the thorax is quite dark. So that's what we're gonna work on next here. I'm not gonna do a wing pad or a wing case or anything because um, the wing pad and the thorax of this bug look very, very similar in terms of coloration. So I don't feel like that detail is something the fish are gonna key in on. I'm doing another small dubbing loop here. This time, I'm gonna do a little blend of two things. I've got some dark brown hair's mask or a hair's ear that I'm gonna pull off of this mask, and then I've got some ice dub and peacock black. I'm gonna take my take my hair's mask here. I'm gonna just pull some of this out. Uh, lots of guard hairs in here because this is going to simulate, you know, the thorax of the fly as well as maybe some some legs and and the more prominence you have standing out here, the better. All right. I'm going to do about a one to one ratio here of these two. I'm going to just blend them together. Awesome. I got one straggler of copper in there. All right, open up the dubbing loop. I'm starting kind of here with this preset and a bit of a taper here. So you can kind of see it's in a line going from a little bit on the light side to a little bit on the heavier side. All the way up to where it meets the body. And then we're going to spin it up. those partridge legs out of there. This stuff will kind of fall right out of the, uh, the dubbing loop, but I'm just trying to sweep these back so I don't make a giant clumpy ball in the thorax. I kind of want to not get too bulky. And that's starting to kind of look like something you'd want to tie on the end of your fly line and fish. Right. 
I'm gonna secure this here right behind the bead two behind one in front and another behind alex do you, do you typically fish this for an indicator oh or? that sucks oh, that's a bummer happens to the best of us oh yeah but do you fish that typically under an indicator or are you using a euro nymph setup or the answer to that question greg is yes yes and yes i like to fish this on a on the euro nymph I like to fish it under dropper dry fly uh, fish it under an indicator really just depends on how labor intensive I want to be with my fishing that day I find probably my favorite way to do it is with the Euronymph because when you're fishing this so close to the shore you can control the depth a little bit easier if you're experienced Euronymphing um, you can control the depth a little bit easier and not hang up on the bottom quite as often and uh, you're fishing fairly shallow riffles and runs sometimes really close to the shore and it can be pretty easy to hang up and you know get kind of mad and frustrated and lose some flies but fishing from a, a boat or if you're not into the urine nymphing scene just as good to go for the dry dropper or the indicator and i'm just going to make a hand whip finish here We are all done. Got a little bulky there with the thread head, but we'll make it do. Oh, that looks great. There it is.